All right, today we are getting back to work on Goldie Hawn. And hopefully in particular, we are going to fix these rusty rockers. Uh, at least cover them up. You'll see more about that in a second. Uh, quick side note, you might want to turn on notifications because I was completely torn on whether I wanted to work on Goldie Hawn or the Suburban outside. So I put up a quick little poll on the YouTube community tab and I let you guys pick. I said, what do I want to work on today? Goldie Hawn or the LS uh, Suburban? And I think last time I looked at it, it was like 77% of you said Goldie Hawn. So uh, if you guys want to help determine future videos, definitely turn on notifications and all that other kind of bullshit stuff. So uh, let's, uh, let's show you guys what we're working with today. So hopefully most of you guys are familiar with this truck by now. This is my 2000 GMC Sierra. It has a bone stock 240,000 mile 5.3 in it. Uh, I have a Texas Speed Cam. It's their stage three low lift truck cam. A lot of people still aren't sure about that even though I've done like three videos where I talk about it uh, and one where I install it. And it has a uh, Vortec V3 supercharger making about nine pounds of boost. For a daily driver street truck, the thing is a ton of fun. Uh, unfortunately, right now, the trans has been acting up. It's not wanting to lock up the converter. And uh, I figured, since I can't drive it, I might as well uh, try to do some other stuff on it. Today's video is particularly about this right down there. Something that you guys give me crap about constantly. And something that is super common with virtually any truck. Uh, not just a Chevy thing. I've seen rusty cap corners on Fords. I've seen them on Dodges. I've seen them on pretty much every truck. So what's a girl to do when you've got a truck that you care about and some very religious rockers and cab corners? Uh, well, you could do what I've done for the past two or three years and just ignore it and hope it doesn't get any worse. Spray some paint on it to try to alleviate some of that spreading disease. Or you could cut it out and weld in some new stuff, which is tough for a lot of people. There's a lot of people who don't know how to weld or they're worried about catching their interior on fire because they don't have a welding blanket. I have never had a welding blanket and I've caught interiors on fire before. You could take it to a shop, but that is super expensive, which is why I do most of my stuff myself because I'm very poor. <laughs> uh, shops are not cheap and usually they're not cheap because they're good and they've got all the tools and stuff um, to do things the right way. So let's say that you don't know how to weld and you don't want to pay upwards of a thousand dollars to have a shop cut out your old stuff weld in all new pieces grind the welds down prime it and paint it what are you to do well i've got some good news for you because there's something that i did not know about until just last week that uh is perfect for you so you can fix your rusty cab corners and your rusty rockers without welding and very likely in one day all right so this is exactly what I'm talking about. This showed up uh, pretty much at the beginning of this week. And uh, this is from a company called Original Appearance Manufacturing. So if you cast your mind back to the last video where we took both of the trucks to the track, uh, in the beginning of that video I said if Goldie Hawn ran a 12, I would start treating her right now to fix the, uh, the cab corners and the rockers and some of the rust on it and try to make her a little bit more solid. No joke, that same day, uh, this guy sent me a message on Instagram and said, hey, I've got this product, I run this company, and I would love to send you one to uh, use on your truck and uh, kind of let your subscribers know about it, because I had never even thought that there'd be a product like this out there. I'm sure a lot of you guys probably are, are familiar with this, but I'd never seen anything like this. I was planning on just cutting it out and welding in new steel cab corners and everything. Um, but full disclosure, he did send these to me. I did not pay for them, but I did not say, <laughs> but I did not sign anything saying that I wouldn't shit talk them if they're bad. So, um, I will try to be as honest as possible. And I have not opened this box yet. You and I are going to see them both for the first time at the same time. So, uh, I know I'm pretty eager. These have been sitting here for about a week. Just been, uh, trying to wait for the right time. And I think now's that time. So I'm going to go grab a knife. All right, so it says this side up. I'm just gonna rip the side off and see uh, what what we got going on. All right, I see something. What are you? So this. These are called quick covers, corrosion solutions, and these ones are for 99 to 06. 
basically the NBS trucks, and I do believe they have them for uh, extended cabs and crew cabs too. Uh, it has some instructions for the painter. It says two person installation recommended but not required. All right, the product. Quick covers are a high strength plastic panel form fitted to your specific vehicle. And the process, remove surface rust and debris from the exterior, of course. Apply a rust inhibitor to reduce the spread of corrosion. Uh, paint match them. We might get around to that today. Um, the result is a long lasting, it, they have some before and after pictures. So that's what the covers will look like. There's a before picture and there's an after picture. Looks like the same truck. It's convincing. Uh, some QC stickers, one that says Twas Rusty. There are some big ass rivets. Some big fuckers. Some 3M double sided tape. And like six alcohol prep pads. So that's cool. Alright, here's the actual covers themselves. Oh! Oh, that's fucking cool. Sent a hat. What is this? This is wet. We'll get to that in a second. We'll get to all that in a second. Some more stuff. Okay. All right. I'm gonna lay these down. First impressions. They are super, super realistic. I'll give you guys a quick look. It looks like they, I don't know if they 3D scanned something or if they just took like a direct mold or what. It's kind of thin, like I was expecting it to be a little thicker, but uh, it's super convincing. Like they even have all the, uh, the pinches down here. I dig it. They're, I mean, they're plastic, so they're obviously very, very light. And they go up a whole lot further than I was expecting. I thought they were going to stop like right in here somewhere. I really thought that it was gonna like come down and just stop to where you kinda, like when you're looking at the truck you can't see it, but I guess since a lot of people with lifted trucks would want these too, it makes sense to have them go all the way down. And then they do go back quite a ways to hide behind the bed. All right, neat. Um, some of the other things that showed up are a rust inhibitor. Uh, corrosion inhibiting compounds. This is, this is 125 wet black. Sweet, that's cool. And what is this? Anti-static surface cleaner, bumper and cladding coat, adhesive, adhesion primer. Sticks to raw TPO plastic without scuffing sanding. Wow, I wasn't expecting this. I really thought it was just gonna be like some of the 3M double-sided tape and just get it lined up and then stick it on and that's it. So this is way more detailed than I was expecting already. Oh, there is something else in here. It says brackets. What bracket? Is there anything else in there? I think that's it. I'm going to assume that these are just to uh, reinforce the, the bottom part. Maybe, that way it's not just flopping around where it's all rusted out and you can't glue it to anything. That's what it seems like to me. All right, I think before we test fit these real quick, I'm gonna move the truck over to the other side of the garage so that it's just easier to see everything. Because right now it's kind of cramped right here. So first things first, uh, this trim piece is gonna have to come off, but for the test fitting, we should be aight. So let's just throw this thing up in here and see what we're working with. All right. So you can see how 
once that trim piece is off, it'll go right up to this body line here and kind of hide that seam. And I suppose if you really wanted to, you could, uh, oh, it looks like I'm going to have to pull the weather stripping out too to help hold it. And I suppose if you really wanted to, you could use a little bit of, uh, of like Bondo or mud or whatever to uh, kind of blend it. But once you're like, I'm only maybe five feet away, I think it'll hide it pretty decently. I used to have the, I used to have some touch up paint that was the same color as my truck. I don't think I have it anymore. I don't know where, I might have left it over at Pop's shop. So yeah, I think, oh, and something else I just noticed. It looks like this little like lip there, it looks like that will slide into there and help hide it too. I've gotta say, like, I was expecting to be a bit of a dick today, but I'm impressed so far. I think I might actually like run over and try and find that paint and uh, get them all paint mesh and everything. All right, I ended up just buying some because I couldn't find any over there. All right, so we're finally starting the actual work. First thing we gotta do is take this little uh, trim piece off. The best thing I found to use for that is like fishing line, but uh, I'm not a fish, so I don't have any. I've got this like really thin steel wire that's used to like fish bolts. I guess it is a fishing line. It's used to like fish bolts through a, a hole in the frame. So I'm hoping that this will work just as well, but I don't, I don't know because I'm not going to be able to really grab it. I don't want to screw it up because I'd like to use it again. That's why I saved it. So now I'm just going to try to get all this off, spray some uh, goof off stuff that I have, wipe that all down and get it all cleaned up, clean as I can, uh, and then we'll start test fitting. It actually didn't say anything about taking this weather stripping off, but to me it looked like uh, it would fit better if I put the weather stripping over this, but you know, who knows? I've never done this before. I'm not gonna doubt their instructions, but to me it seems like it'd be easier to get the front slid in that little groove first and then swing the back around. So that's what I'm going to try. See what I was talking about a little bit with how it like kind of hides under that body line. And uh, could bring that in a little bit. It has, it came with the 3M tape that I showed you. I think we should be able to get back and take a look at it now. I don't know if we'll be able to close the door. It, you know, it does look better. It really does. I gotta figure something out with that front. I might have to unbolt the bottom of my fender, but it's really not bad. All right, so I trimmed the front a little bit more. You can actually get an idea of what it's gonna look like. I need to trim the front a little bit more. You can see kind of where it's starting to bow down from uh, not being able to fit quite right. But it, it fits really, really, really well. I mean, once all the, uh, the 3M tape and everything is on here, and uh, I'll space it down a little bit so that when it's pressed on, it'll stay kind of tight like that. And then once it's all paint matched, I think it'll blend in pretty well because that'll start like right where that shadow is that you see. I think it'll look pretty good, really. And here's what it looks like inside the door. If all I showed you was this, you'd never know. That's crazy. I gotta be honest, it's pretty good so far. 
but I'm going to finish trying to fit this one a little bit better and then I'll pull it off, start putting the tape on and then uh, prep it for paint. Now it says to let that tack up for five minutes in between coats. And I did a real, real light first coat so that there's something to build off of. All right, so that's been drying for about 60 minutes, probably a little more by now because I went in and had dinner. And uh, I think we're good enough to start spraying the actual color coat. Alright, so this is going to be about the same as with the primer. The primer called for 5 minutes in between coats. This stuff says 10 minutes in between coats. Uh, the first 2 or 3 I'm going to basically just dust on so I can build off of that. I'm trying to do it as nicely as I can without being like, without like ordering actual paint and like mixing shit in beakers and going full uh, Bill Nye the Science Guy on it. But uh, I'm just going to let it tack up for about 8 minutes and uh, we'll start spraying some more. Hopefully get this side all done today. All right, I think I'm good. So I, uh, I only got one can of the color coat because the AutoZone near me only had one in stock. So I just went to another AutoZone and got two more cans of pewter metallic and I went to open one and I took the cap off and the thing fucking exploded. Well, you can see, I tried to clean it up but I quickly gave up. Here's the cap, like that's straight up liquid. The top just blew off of it. So luckily I was wearing the glasses and luckily I was able to clean them up because these are like my only good pair of glasses left. Anyway, I was mad, so I uh, forgot to film doing some of the rest of the steps. But this is probably about four color coats and one coat of this clear. And this might be my new favorite, like, clear coat in a can. This is one coat, and look at that. That is really, really, really good. So normally I'll just get, like, whatever acrylic enamel stuff they have. This is my first time using the acrylic lacquer and this stuff is really, really good. I might only do one more coat and then just call it good. But I don't know if it would even need that. Oh, I got a little bit of runs, but that's okay. I did put it on really thick right here. All right, so I'm just going to let this dry and then we'll pick it up uh, once it's dry enough to actually handle and start throwing back on the truck. All right, so it is stuck in place right now. We got all the 3M tape all peeled. It is being held in only with that. I do want to put a couple screws throughout the bottom just to uh, help hold it up. I might try to sneak some 3M tape in there. I don't know, because I do have the like their, their quick brackets on the bottom. I was going to film putting it on, but once I got it all test fit and kind of in place, I just reached back and peeled the tape out of the way and stuck it back on real quick. And it looks really good from, uh, 
right about here, right about five feet away. Any closer than that, and on camera it looks really good, but in person, because the stock paint on the truck is 20 years old and faded, in person you can kind of tell. And then if you look at it from about this angle, you can see where that seam is. But, I mean, if you're back right here, it looks damn good. It looks way good. And then once you just imagine it with the trim back on, because I am going to keep the trim on to kind of help divert the eyes from it a little bit. All right, so I said screw it. I put that trim piece back on. Man, this thing, it, it really, really did kind of change the look of the truck. Because like before, <laughs> under the door, there was just nothing. So I still have to finish up the other side, but it is like 11.30 right now. So I will probably just do that tomorrow. There's part of me that's tempted to leave it black, but uh, nah, I won't do it like that. I'll get it painted and I'll finish it up right, but that is definitely gonna do it for today's video. I hope this helps someone out who wants to kind of improve the look of their truck that has rusty cab corners and rusty rockers and stuff like that. If I had to give this a grade, I would say A minus. And I'm only saying A minus because there were a couple little parts in the instructions that weren't super clear, like those uh, quick bracket things. It was it kind of glossed over those, and like I think the wording was, if you need to install the quick brackets, now's the time to do it, or something like that. It didn't really say like what way they need to face, what orientation they need to be. Um, once you like get down there and start looking at everything, it's kind of self-explanatory, but it did take me a couple minutes in. I think if I had to be critical over something, that's really the only thing I can think of. Everything else, like the, the quality is good, the plastic, it's not so thin that I'm worried about it breaking, but it's not so heavy that you can't like kind of twist it and contort it in any way that you need. It's not difficult to cut. The fit and finish obviously is, is really good. From 10 feet away, you can't even tell. Like I said at the beginning, if you've got a truck that you care about, you can ignore it, you can uh, try to tackle it yourself. If you don't wanna do that, taking it to a shop uh, could be $1,000, could be way more, depending on your area. I have had uh, someone quote me, and I'm in kind of like a lower income area, I was quoted $1,000. So, I mean, if you're in like Dallas or something, they could want like two, three thousand dollars. I don't know. Hey, these are like 350 bucks around there. They're real close to that. Hopefully this gives you guys another option, something to uh, think about. Man, it really does look good. Maybe now you guys will quit giving me shit about it. So I think that's gonna wrap it up for today. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. Thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing. We'll see you next time.